Today, on Virtualize Everything, we're going to be installing PyHole in a container on Proxmox. Now, this is something that we've featured many times before on the channel, but here in 2024, we're noticing that we're getting a lot of comments on some of our older videos of viewers that are struggling to do this. So we thought we'd take the time and make a new video about how to install PyHole on Proxmox in a container here in 2024. The first thing you're going to need to do is open your Proxmox web interface. And you can notice that I've done so right here. And I want you to move to the local account for storage. And then I would like you to select container templates or CT templates. Now you can see I have the template downloaded that we're going to use here. But if you didn't already have it downloaded, go ahead and click on templates right here and start by searching for Debian. We're going to choose Debian 12 and you're going to press download. I'm not pressing download right now because like you saw a minute ago, I already have it down closing out that screen. You're going to come up to create container and here at container, you're going to give it a name. We're going to go with PyHole video here for mine. And for me, I'm going to enter a password. This is going to be your root password and it's going to be important to remember later on. Press next. 8 gigs should be fine for PyHole. Pressing next, it's going to ask us to select CPUs. We're going to choose one core, 512 memory, network. We're going to set an IP address as after all, this is a server and we're going to want to be able to set other devices to point to it. So we don't want it changing with whatever our DHCP server decides to assign to it. My network's going to be 192.168.3 and something that I select. I'm just going to choose 60 here. And then it's going to be a slash 24 because my network is running from 0 to 255 with usable addresses from 1 to 254. Then we're going to select our gateway. Mine's going to be 192.168.3.1. Hitting next, we're going to use the DNS of our host. And pressing next, we're going to select finish. And this is going to create our container. Now that task OK has appeared down here, we can go ahead and close our screen. And we can select our container just by clicking on it, as I did here. There's going to be really no special configurations that we have to do anywhere inside of any of these options for pipe so we can go ahead press start and we can our console with our console open we can go ahead and log into our root user account with root and the password we set up before now at this point you may want to go ahead and create a separate username for your user and password and assign that pseudo permissions but overall for getting PyHole up and running, you don't need to do that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to run an APT update, and I'm going to string it together with some ampersands with an APT grid, and I'll add a dash Y. So all of this runs. Now that we have everything dated and upgraded in our Debian container, it's time to start the process of installing Hole. So the first thing we're going to do is copy and paste the wget command from the pyhole github information section and the command's going to look like the one shown here on the screen. Go ahead and look at the notes for this video for a link to the pyhole get page so you can copy and paste these commands for yourself. Pressing enter it's going to go ahead and download the script that we're now going to execute that will begin the process of installing PyHole. So this next command is going to tell this, the container that we want to use a bash script and the script's name that we would like to execute being basic install.sh. I'm gonna press enter and the installation process is going to execute. We are going to be asked a few questions during this installation process, so follow along. The first thing is a warning message that we're going to transform this container into a network 
wide ad blocker. I'm going to press OK. And we're going to acknowledge that we know PyHole is free. So we're going to also press OK. We're getting a warning message that this needs to be on a static IP address. We already set up that static IP address when we made the container. So we're going to press the over key and enter to continue. We're choosing to use Google's DNS here. You can select a few others or select custom. Now, later on, when we get into the web interface, you're also going to be able to configure these as you want if you want to use something different. We're being asked if we want to include a basic block list that's provided to us through the PyHole installation. And yes, we do, so we can get this up and running as fast as possible. So our cursor is already selecting yes, so we're just going to press Enter. And I want to install the admin web interface, so again, I'm pressing Enter. And this is just asking you if it can go ahead and install a web server because it's going to need this for the admin web interface. So we're pressing Enter, and it's asking us if we'd like to enable login and yes I would so I have something to look back on if for your particular scenario you don't want it go ahead and select no at this point and I want to show everything so again I'm just pressing enter to continue so now that pi holes done installing we can go ahead and take some note of the information. Some of the notes of information that we want to pay attention to is the actual path to the web admin interface is now HTTP IP address slash admin and our admin password is randomly generated. So at this point, what we can do is go to our web browser and we can create another tab and we can actually browse to the PyHole web interface. Now here at the PyHole web interface, if we press the plus icon, it's going to give us a command here. And what this command is going to do is allow us, since we have command line access to this server, to change the password to something that we desire to use more than that randomly generated password. So back here at this screen, we can go ahead hit enter, close out the particular display that we had with the login information, and we can type in pihole-a p and press enter, which will at this point ask us for our new password. We'll enter what we desire, and our password is going to be changed. Now here at our web interface, we'll enter that new password, pressing enter, and you can see that we have logged in to PyHole, and you can see that we have now logged into PyHole. It's up and running and ready for you to start configuring with your own block lists and your own DNS information. And you can see right here, that's where that Steve's block list was added in that we chose during the setup. So basically all that's left for you to do in this process is for you to log into your router. I won't be covering that in this video as every router seems to have a different configuration process mainly and point your local DHCP server to your new IP address of your newly configured PyHole server. That'll set up your entire network to filter DNS requests based on the block lists that have been installed on your PyHole server, in this case, the Steve blacklist. As always, I hope you found this video educational and it helped you get your PyHole server up and running here in 2024. So have a good night.